If you're getting out of a relationship, if you feel stuck and you need some direction, I might have the perfect person for you to connect with. I'm talking today with Mary Jane Allen, who is a forensic intuitive, here to help empower women in times of divorce, separation, and other times of need. She has the insights that may help you be better informed about your partner and to help get you on the right new path. Also, there is an exercise toward the middle of a discussion called the yes, no exercise. This can help you find truth within yourself that can assist you in making better decisions. So definitely check that out. And of course, Karma Hub, it's a learning channel centered around a wide variety of non-traditional healing modalities and the practitioners that offer them. So please don't forget to click on the like button and click on the Karma Hub subscribe button. And I really hope you enjoy this talk. Thank you so much. Part of what I do, of course, as a forensic intuitive is um, I'm shown essentially what is going on behind the scenes um, in other people who are connected to my client. Um, gotcha. So if, if someone is hiding something or, you know, um, not being upfront and truthful, right. um, that information will be shown to me. And, um, you know, then that person can take that information and use it um, however they right. need to. If, if you're struggling in life, if you feel stuck, if you feel, you know, you don't know what you're supposed to be doing, what direction you're supposed to be taking, uh, if you don't feel like um, you're getting through your separation and divorce, um, you know, with um, support and in the best way that you can so that you can be the best you you can be, um, I'd love to help you. And that's why I'm here. I know that this type of work that you do and so many of those other, other practitioners that I have on my website do is... I mean, it's, it's, it's like miracle work. It's, it, it's really hard to put a finger on, but it's so effective, so powerful, and it, it changes people's lives. So tell me a little bit about what you do. My specialty, if you will, is to empower women going through separation and divorce. Okay. Um, and I use a variety of tools to do that, of course. Um, I am a forensic intuitive and a psychic medium. Um, I, see. I use energy healing a great deal as well. I've been trained in various modalities. Um, so I shift a lot of energy behind the scenes um, as well as um, use physical techniques and coaching techniques to help women um, become the best version of themselves at what can be a very difficult time. Um, right. yeah. So, so with the energy work, how exactly does that come into play? Um, yeah. well, um, when someone connects with me, um, I, I essentially am, am shown what I'm shown their, you know, their, their energy body and, uh, I'm my guides, my high self, um, show me what, um, you know, what needs to be done, what needs to be shifted or cleared away, um, or, you know, cleared and then, you know, downloads brought in or whatever needs to be done for, gotcha. um, you know, for them to achieve what they're looking for in their life. Um, you know, for example, people, um, come to me sometimes for, you know, um, issues around money or work or, you know, their relationships or something like that. And um, I have, <laughs> this may sound strange, but it's my life. Okay, um, yeah. I, will, I will have some um, deceased relatives arrive in because I am a medium, of course. And uh, I didn't go looking for that. It just found me. But anyway, okay. um, you know, so I will have some relatives on my sofa just over here, my living room. Gotcha. Um, so then I then know that there is some what what spirit uh, calls for me deep seated grief. Um, and it's grief that has not been resolved for some ish for some reason. Um, yeah. It can be usually because there is unfinished business uh, between um you know, deceased people, family members, friends on the other side and the person. And that grief has been kind of swept under the carpet, if you will. They've done the best they could to heal it, but grief can be extremely painful, as we all know. And as a result, um, 
people sometimes, you know, try not to, well, they do the best they can. Maybe they haven't had the help that they needed with a therapist or, you know, whatever they needed right. um, or a healer. But um, anyway, it's the grief has been swept under the carpet. And so it's being brought up for clearing. And gotcha. that um, happens quite frequently with people coming for other reasons, which is. Right. I imagine if someone's coming to you because they're in a separation or a divorce, yeah. there's a lot of stuff coming to the surface and Absolutely. Yeah. Um, so yeah. it's, it's harder to push it away and, and, and hold it in when all of that other stuff's going on. So I guess that's a good time to just kind of make the shift. It definitely is. Right. Um, and, you know, um, I've been through it and, you know, I know many people of course have been through separation and divorce, but I think, you know, um, having someone to help you through it is so important. And um, right. myself, I did, I had a wonderful teacher and mentor uh, help me through it. And uh, I think, you know, you need someone to, um, to give you, you know, the, the healing, the guidance, the, you know, whatever you're, you're not able to um, kind of get to on your own. Um, and part of what I do, of course, as a forensic intuitive is, um, I'm shown essentially what is going on behind the scenes um, in other people who are connected to my client. Um, gotcha. So if, if someone is hiding something or, you know, um, not being upfront and truthful, right. um, that information will be shown to me. And, um, you know, then that person can take that information and use it um, however they right. need to to get closure um, and healing because without, you know, I always say this and I know you know this, but um, without the truth, we can't truly heal because, you know, there's always something sort of hanging out right. in the ether, ethers, I guess, you know, um, that we, you know, if we don't know the truth behind something, we've always been, it's always nagging at us, you know, like, right. what, what did he mean? It's like an unanswered that? question. Yes, absolutely. Yes. Unanswered questions and we need good guidance and, and healing around that. And so if we don't have the truth, we really can't fully heal um, and truly move on as we are meant to be uh, doing so. Yeah. That makes sense. Yeah, that's an interesting tool to have that uh, since you're intuitive, you can kind of pick up on uh, other people's activities. I guess, so to speak. Yes. <laughs> I, I did not go looking for this again. It found yeah. me. But anyway. Well, tell me a little bit about that. How did you uh, go down this path? Why are you here? Well, um, about, 10, about 10 years ago, I guess, um, I met my first mentor and friend, um, healer. Um, and I, at the time I, you know, um, she was offering Akashic record readings and I had never heard of the Akashic records at that stage, but I've been looking, you know, looking for the truth of me, you know, who am I, what am I here for, for years, right. finally, um, and someone heard me and, uh, <laughs> sent me to this website. And, uh, then I began working, uh, with a wonderful woman and, um, eventually, uh, I was trying to read the Akashic records, um, but um, in working with various mentors, um, I've cleared away um, a lot of family debris, a lot of um, grief, a lot of um, energetic issues that were holding me back so that I could not see what my gifts were. Because, you know, truth be told, I knew as a child um, that I was... Um, you know, that I could see things. I saw Sorry, my okay. grandfather when he was dead the day of his funeral, I saw him, but I had blocked it out. Gotcha. Um, and um, that seems to be I a pretty mean, common case that, uh, you yeah. know, a, a lot of practitioners um, or people that have these gifts or, or senses, uh, they, they, they knew they had it early on in childhood. And, you know, oftentimes in their grade school years, they, learn to block it out because it's weird, <laughs> you know, it's weird. <laughs> and, yeah. and, you know, personally, I mean, up to just a couple of years ago, I would have, you know, I, I would have thought it was weird. I did think it was weird. Mm -hmm. It was, well, you know, it, now I think it's real. I still think it's weird. <laughs> Why would I do it? <laughs> I still think it's weird, but now I know that it's real, you know, that's, yeah. um, 
and it's very effective. And yes, you can tap into other people's energies and yeah, you can connect with the collective consciousness and get answers. And, um, and it's weird, but it's real. <laughs> so, yes. Yeah. And for me, you know, um, in my work and I'm here to serve people, you know, that's yeah. really what I'm doing here. Yeah. Um, I'm here to see um, drastic changes in people from the time they come to me, you know, and until they're ready to go, you know, I see, even in one session, sometimes I see like one person coming in and after a mediumship session, and, and this makes me, I'm getting a full body chill right now. Right, gotcha. it's so, so true. Um, I, I see a very different person. I mean, it's a completely different mm -hmm. person. You know, there may have been, you know, next to an hour of crying. Sometimes there's no crying, but, you know, I hold a, a loving uh, space to allow that to come through so that these truths can be exchanged between, you know, the, the family members and the client um, so that that healing can take place. But, but yeah, it's just seeing that drastic change in someone um, and hearing from them. Then I always check in with people the next day and, you know, to see how they're doing and if right. there's anything further needed. Um, and, you know, just to have, you know, confirmation from someone, for example, I, I worked with a, a lovely woman whose twin brother had committed suicide. And, um, you know, um, when I checked in with her, well, I mean, she was a completely different person. She did release a lot. Um, my high self always steps in. So I don't feel the trauma of the actual event that gotcha. we're, we're working on. Um, but you know, seeing her afterwards, she was completely, you know, she said, I'm, I'm free of this and I can't believe it. I have been struggling wow. with this for years. And then the next morning I checked in, how are you doing? How are you feeling? You know, did you rest? You know, blah, blah, blah. Um, and she said, I slept amazingly well. And, you know, it's like, I feel at peace for the first time in, you know, 10 years, I can't right. believe this. And, and for me that there is no better feeling than that, obviously that's yes. what I, that's why I'm here on the planet, you know, so yeah. getting, getting that uh, from uh, someone's and, energy is amazing. And, and I, I agree a hundred percent with you. I mean, I've, uh, you know, um, I, I've experienced a number of uh, huge shifts in my life. I've, um, I have a number of uh, friends who have experienced huge shifts and I've heard so many stories and mm -hmm. I know that this type of work that you do and so many of those other, other practitioners that I have on my website do is, I mean, it's, it's, it's like miracle work. It's, it, it's really hard to put a finger on, but it's so effective, so powerful, and it, it changes people's lives. It's, it's some important work that you're doing. And, mm -hmm. um, and, you know, myself, again, I'm trying to bring, people together to people like you um, to have this shift to take place. Um, so, yeah, thank you. It's fantastic. Thank you. thank you, Lauren, because what you're doing is amazing. You know, you're providing a forum where people can find what they need, you know, to heal themselves in yeah. whatever way they feel is best. For I them. hope, you know, you have to be ready for it. And unfortunately, yes. uh, divorce often is the time that people start searching. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you know, yes, yeah. So I, I, I imagine since you have a lot of clients that come your way because you help, um, you know, that's, that's kind of your, your niche is divorce, separation, uh, helping the women out, helping them know uh, truth and also their truth. Yes. Um, um, that, that's huge. And I can see where at that time, because that's your niche that you can make some really huge shifts in people because, you know, once again, divorce and um, a change in lifestyle, change in um, uh, philosophy, ideas, uh, you know, mental placement, it, it often happens around uh, something like that. It's true. Um, and, you know, when, when I actually, I have a, a program, I should just mention this. I am, um, it's a 10 weeks to empowerment. It's a group program for women in separation and divorce. And it's, I'm very, I'm, I'm more of a hands-on person. Um, so I like to have more contact with clients to get deeper, you know, bigger right. shift basically. So it's, it's half group and it's half um, personal sessions. 
Makes sense. Um, so, you know, there's a lot of um, intense healing um, that will be taking place. And, you know, we'll be going places like um, inner child work. Um, of course, we'll be doing any grief healing that needs to be done, any kind of energetic healing that needs to be done will be. Um, and a lot of times when, when I start these um, healing sessions, I can see pieces of the person's blueprint being returned to them because oh, wow. a lot of times when, well, when we're in a relationship that isn't serving us um, or, you know, another situation that isn't serving us in life, such as a business relationship, whatever it might be, or we're not on our path to purpose and, you know, really aligned with what we're meant to be doing. Um, we give away um, without knowing parts of our blueprint. Um, gotcha. So when this healing happens, I can see like big pieces of blueprint and, and uh, coming back into the person. And that means then they're going to have revelations about, oh my God, you know, I've always thought I was interested in art. Well, you know, this seems to be something I really want to pursue. You know, this is the kind of thing, like they'll have a download um, or several or dreams, you know, and um, tell me about them and, you know, and it's, it's life purpose work. And, you know, they've been previously in a job they were stuck in and just felt like drudgery and it just not, you know, for them. And, you know, they were feeling disempowered because of that. So yeah, um, there are many avenues that we pursue when we do the um, empowerment through separation and divorce work. Yeah. See, that sounded kind of like what you were describing about uh, like pieces being returned back to the individual. That sounded kind of like a shamanic work. It does sound a bit shamanic. And I, you know, I, I, I don't have shamanic training, um, but it's just how um, my groups and my, my high self um, uh, present things to me, I guess okay. is probably the right word. Um, Fair enough. So, you know, it's what I see, you know, as a clairvoyant. Um, yes. And, um, you know, I, I just, I can see that the person and their energy changing and um, knowing that, you know, in the coming four days, probably, it's usually about four days that it takes to integrate uh, some of these clearings, that, um, you know, they will be more knowledgeable about who they truly are. That's so fantastic. Wow. Previously. So that makes me happy. Yes. <laughs> As it should. You know, we talked a little before this, and you had mentioned um, maybe, I guess it was kind of a sort of a muscle test, but more of a like a body sway motion yeah. that can allow people to infer what the truth might be. Yeah, absolutely. It's a tool that you can use to kind of tap into your, your subconscious. Um, I call it the yes, no body test. Um, and, you know, if, if you have... Um, if you have a habit of not trusting your intuition or you haven't developed it, you know, a lot and you want to, um, or if you have a big decision coming up that you need to make and, you know, you, you know, just want to make the right decision and, you know, don't have someone to ask, um, it's a really good tool uh, to use. Nice. So essentially it's um, you, I say, I mean, some people say, you know, some people meditate sitting up, I meditate lying down. So, okay. so I say, <laughs> lie down on your sofa or your bed, get comfortable, um, you know, take some deep breaths and just relax your body, you know, and maybe listen to a, a bit of a meditation um, video or, or uh, recording for a few minutes just to relax and just, you know, let any kind of tension of the day just go, you know, and just be very aware of your body from your head to your toes. Um, and then I always suggest people ground themselves into the earth. And the way I like to do that is by imagining yourself standing on uh, the grass outside or, you know, the beach or wherever, you know, you feel you'd like to be. Um, and just picture the energy coming from your heart, going down uh, your breath energy. That is you take a deep breath. It's in your heart. And it's going down through your chest, your stomach, down through your legs, out the bottoms of your feet. And then it becomes big tree roots going down into the earth, 
spreading deeper and wider, going deeper and deeper and wider, and all the way through all the different layers and levels of the earth, the crystals and the different forms of rock until you reach the center of the earth. And you'll see a beautiful pool there of rose gold water, which is infinite love, divine love. And there's a big crystal there. And it can be whatever color you want. Is it rose quartz? Is it clear quartz? Whatever you feel is right for you. And you then wrap your tree roots around that beautiful crystal and you bring your energy up through the various levels of the tree roots up through all of the layers and levels of the shale and the granite and the crystals and everything that makes up the center of the earth right to the top of the earth and back up through your feet your legs your abdomen and right into your heart center and now what I do is I ask myself questions that I know the answers to. And this is the way to develop this technique. For example, a really good question to ask yourself at this point, um, or a good statement to make, I'll say, is your name. Okay, I would say, uh, my name is Mary Jane Allen. And then, you feel in your body how that feels. What sensations are you feeling when you say, like if you say to yourself, my name is Lauren Duffy. What do you feel in your body and where? Like for me, it's when I say it's Mary, my name is Mary Jane Allen. It's, um, it's a very light feeling here in my, in my heart center, my um, chest area. Um, and I can feel like a fluttering kind of, of energy sort of moving out. It feels expansive. It feels expansive. Okay. My stomach, I feel like a lightness, I'll say. There's no constriction. There's no restriction in either area. What, what are you feeling in yourself, Lauren? Try it on yourself. Um. So for me, it, it's very similar. You had mentioned the lightness. Um, it was kind of a, a wave of energy that went out through my arms and also down through my feet. Oh, cool. Uh, very light and warm, yeah. originating yeah. in the chest area. Yeah, cool. That's neat. I, I like that. I've not heard that expressed that way. That's very cool. It's so different for all of us. You know, everyone's okay. a very different response. So that's a yes, obviously. Yes. We've said our names. This is what it feels like in our bodies. That's a yes. And I highly recommend people repeating it, you know, just repeat it again and again, or repeat another statement that is true that you know to be true. Uh, for example, here, I will say, I was born in Berg. Same, it's very light. The energy is moving out. Um, there's no constriction. My stomach is like a light, sort of a fluttery, expansive feeling it's it's right. it's easy there's no restriction right yeah that makes sense so that's a yes now yes. if i say um you know for example if i i don't live there so i will i'll do a no um i live in baltimore <sighs> that to me feels restrictive there's a tightness in my heart area the center of my chest um, and it's going out into my arms. I feel like a, a kind of a pulling out into my arms and almost like a knot in my stomach. And that is a no, obviously, because I do not live in Baltimore. So again, um, highly recommend, you know, practicing different questions that you know the answer is yes. So right. you can feel how that feels in different okay. areas of your body. And then practicing a bunch of different questions that you know the answer is no. So you gotcha. can do that, of course. Um, and, you know, it, it's, it, it's somewhat like muscle testing. I mean, it, it's, but it's using your entire body and uh, right. 
it's a great way to trust yourself, your, trust your intuition more and feel more comfortable um, in making decisions. And it's a great way to empower yourself. So I guess from there, you would ask a question that you don't really know the answer to and yeah. your body will tell you by feeling one way or yes. the other. Yeah. Is it like the yes that I experienced when I said my name? Gotcha. Or is it like the no that I experienced when I said I lived in Baltimore, you know, which is it, is it, you know, and this is why I say it's really good when you're starting this to practice various questions that, you know, are a yes, various ones that, you know, are a no. So you get familiar with that sensation. Exactly. You'll know, and you'll be able to read what your body is telling you and, you know, whether it's an affirmation or it's a negative, you know, so, yeah. That is very interesting. Thank you very much. Oh, my pleasure. (laughs) Absolutely. I hope Um, everyone enjoys it. Yes. Yes. Is there anything else that you wanted to add that you wanted to uh, uh, talk about? Um, I guess the other thing I would say is um, as a forensic intuitive, I also do work um, on clients who are enter getting ready to enter a new relationship after separation or during their divorce or after their divorce, whenever they're ready for that. Um, Something that I do, and um, these days a lot of people are doing online dating, as you may know, Um, and it can be very difficult for people to know who they're talking to, you know, um, based on photos and, you know, even based on what someone says, unless you meet them. And sometimes even when, before you meet them, and even when you meet them, you may not um, you know, there are people scamming out there. There are people that are not right. who they say they are, unfortunately. It's right. just uh, how it is. So something that I do um, is I read photos. Um, okay. And what that looks like is, um, you know, people send me um, pictures of uh, someone they're uh, wanting to get to know better on social media or on uh, a dating website. And um, I read the photo based on the eyes only. Um, I have been trained to do Hmm. this. And the eyes literally are the window to the soul. That is not just a a common phrase. Um, It's very true. Um, And I can see sometimes the eyes will have different messages uh, in them, which is a sign of, you know, um, an issue uh, of some sort, okay. um, but I will get very clear. Guidance. Mean if, like they're not congruent within the cell, within themselves. Yeah, there can be okay. a, a different message coming from each eye sometimes, which is gotcha. interesting. Um, I basically I'm reading them for um, integrity. I'm reading them for um, intention, you know, and a lot of other character um, aspects, so that the person who is wanting to get to know this person better has a much bigger picture and better picture of who it is that they're talking to. Um, And the other thing, of course, is sometimes there will be photos used that are not the person speaking, not the photo Hmm. is not who it is represented. Right. right, right. Gotcha. Um, And that for me uh, comes up as a red flag, like no, no, no type thing. So um, yeah, so that's something else I do uh, for women who are ready to um, start dating again or looking for a partner or this even comes in handy for business people um, because sometimes, you know, if you're hiring someone, you're not sure who you're hiring. It's, it's a way of, of knowing a lot more about that person. Um, and of course, at some point, I may be working with the police. I haven't to this point, but uh, helping find missing persons. That's uh, something that I think I may do at some point um, wow. because it's all part of the uh, forensic intuitive kind of tool bag, if you will. Right. Anyway, right. it's what helping. Well, that's anyway. fantastic. So someone can come to you when they're in the middle of a separation or um, a divorce. They can come to you to help get over a lot of the issues that have presented themselves and, and, and help to put them on the right track um, in a time of, of need and a time for their shift. And then also when the time is right for them to start dating again, you can actually kind of help sift through some of the many faces that you see on so many of those apps and make sure that there's, you know, um, that they're corresponding with people maybe that they are, that they should be and not the people that <laughs> they have no business corresponding with. 
Yes. And, you know, so that their time is not wasted, you know, they're not hurt or they're not, you know, someone's not trying to take advantage of them or all the other scenarios that are, right. you know, unfortunately there are people out there doing that, but um, yeah, yes, it is something that I, that I do. And um, it, it's a form of empowering women as well, because, you know, when you go in with the information you need, you have, you know, the ability to, um, get what you want out of um, a situation um, so that it suits you, that is, it is in alignment with you and it is the right person for you. Um, right. Or you have that option. So yeah, I, I love doing that work anyway. So I, I kind of wanted to circle back around. Um, so when you were younger, you, you know, you could um, see energies or see spirit. Um, you blocked it out for a while and then, uh, you met someone that kind of uh, reintroduced you back into uh, that realm. And so when what, when was it that you actually started doing this for other people and this became more of a, a profession? When I really got the knock on the head was so I had a client who was having open heart surgery and um, he wanted some Akashic um, work done and clearing and and the truth about whether he was you know, going to make it through his open heart surgery because it was a 50, 50 chance. He was in his seventies and he had very blocked arteries as I recall. And um, basically what I got from it all was that he was going to sail through it to look at it like a dental checkup. It was just nothing at all. It was going to be done and over with and, you know, bing bong boom. And he basically would be going home early, like two days early. Okay. And I heard from his uh, partner later that that's exactly what happened. So I was thrilled about that. But during the reading, he, um, he was in his 70s. So his father was deceased. And he asked me um, if I could connect him to his father. And I said, oh, <laughs> I don't know, because <laughs> I've never <laughs> done that before. <laughs> right. um, so I was a little bit nervous about it. But I said, OK, you know, speaking to, uh, you know, the, the people, the, the group that I speak to on the other side, I said, could he come forward and speak with his son, please? And I got a lot of messages from him and wow. there was a lot of confirmation, you know, you have work to do, you know, it is not your time to go, not even close. Um, and, you know, it was very affirming and within, I'm going to say within two weeks of that, um, my mind immediately went to the fact that, okay, if I can connect to this man's father who's deceased, I think I can connect to my grandfather and my grandfather was my, my paternal grandfather was my favorite person in the world. And he died when I was a child. And um, so essentially I came home from grocery shopping one day and he was lying on my sofa. So that, that was probably um, the biggest shock of my life. It was a, certainly okay. a very happy shock. Yes. But um, now is, he, is he part of the crew that now hangs out, out on your sofa on a regular basis? Oh, he's everywhere. He lives with okay. me. It's just basically. So, so he showed up and never went away. <laughs> yeah, he's he's here. He's got different outfits on every day. And, you know, he's just, yeah, he was a fishing captain. And so he's quite a quite a, a character anyway. Gotcha. Um, but he looked after me. He was my protector and he still is. Um, but I get a lot of guidance from him. And um, he's done a lot of work with um with me um, in the past 10 years and just helping me find my truth. And uh, my dad is now on the other side, so he's here quite often. <laughs> I know there's a problem where I need to know something if they both end up sitting on the sofa together or if I'm in bed uh, going to sleep and they're both sitting on the side of my bed. Gotcha. That's like, hello, wake up. And, huh. anyway. <laughs> right. <laughs> but it's a, it was a happy experience for sure. I am really grateful that you're doing this sort of work. I think that's my, that's my truth. And um, I, um, yeah, I just want people to know that um, if, if you're struggling in life, if you feel stuck, if you feel, you know, you don't know what you're supposed to be doing, what direction you're supposed to be taking, uh, if you don't feel like um, you're getting through your separation and divorce, um, you know, with, um, support and in the best way that you can so that you can be the best you you can be um, I'd love to help you and that's why I'm here 